Why do we need philosophy? To answer the question in one line, because we suffer. The noble truths in Buddhism begin with this very fact. Suffering is an innate characteristic of existence in the realm of samsara or in the world of time, space and causality. Why did the Buddha say that? Sometimes we feel happy and sometimes sad. When there is both pleasure and pain in life, then why only say that there is suffering in this world? The origin of this suffering is our desires, says the second noble truth. When we take a glance at our lives, most of it can be summed up as a desire for continuity and security. When there is a feeling of sadness, we long for happiness, and when there is a feeling of happiness, we want it to last forever. We attach ourselves to a particular emotion or a specific state of mind. When attached to the feeling of happiness, we cultivate two things. Fear of not being happy and a desire to escape from or distract ourselves from the very fact of a situation. And due to our attachment, we enter the cycle of endless suffering. Afraid when happy and desperate when sad. But why do we do so? When man can find meaning in his life, he distracts himself with pleasure. To state it simply, we enter the cycle because we feel incomplete. We lack meaning or the ability to understand ourselves. But the question is, can we come out of this cycle? Can the pattern be seen and broken? When we come to the third noble truth, the Buddha states that there is freedom from suffering. It can be attained by renouncement or letting go of our desires. Desire for what? For continuity and security. Now instead of going to the fourth noble truth, we are going to look at a verse from the Kart Upanishad. The verse I am referring to is this. Yama says, The good is one thing, the pleasant another. Both of these, serving different needs, bind a man. It goes well with him who of the two takes the good. But he who chooses the pleasant misses the end. Let's expand now on the nature of good and pleasant. Think about something like a gadget or a dress that you wanted to buy, or a soda can that you desired to drink. Or think about someone you had a crush on or someone you wanted to be friends with. Or simply anything that you desire right now. Now these things attract us in such a way that they appear as objects of eternal happiness. But when you get what you want, and the desire is fulfilled, what happens? Two things. It does not satisfy us the same way as it did in our imagination and we are left wanting more. When out of our reach, the desire possesses our minds. We think about it, conceptualize and make ideas around it and so on. In our imagination, we put our desires on a pedestal. And when we are left wanting more, what happens? Let me ask you a question. If you happen to use the service, how many of you have closed Instagram on your device and within a few moments opened it again? Or how many of you have binged on a TV series or rewatched your favorite movies and TV shows? Or just randomly munch on snacks multiple times during the day without any actual hunger? When we are left wanting more, our instinct is to go for more. And when we go for more, we are left wanting more. And what happens after some time is that we stop receiving pleasure from the pleasant. And this is where the suffering kicks in. What we have here is the way a pattern or a habit develops. The nature of pleasant is to provide temporary pleasure. All emotions are temporary in nature. Are we then to suppress all our desires? This would be like asking for the elimination of water because it has the ability to drown people. Remember that the desire to have no desire is also a desire. What to do then? Is there a way out? First thing to be noted here is that Yama states that both good and pleasant serving different needs bind a man. Desire is an innate characteristic of human beings, but it is up to us whether we sink or swim in the water. This is where we come to good. Rather than wasting our energy suppressing our desires, we should above all else desire the good. What is good then? Good is that which leads you to the highest good or liberation, the one that liberates you from suffering. 
Let me give you an example. And be careful with this one. Take it just as an example. There is cola drink and spinach soup. Now the cola drink is sweet and sugary and gives you instant pleasure. The spinach soup on other hand is not sweet and does not give any kind of instant pleasure. Cola drink representing the pleasant provides instant gratification but is not good for the body. Spinach soup on the other hand is not as pleasurable as the cola drink but is nutritious as well as good for the body. Being presented with the choice between the good and the pleasant, choose good. Choose good every time. If you ever happen to turn your attention to externals for the pleasure of anyone, be assured that you have ruined your scheme of life. Be content then in everything with being a philosopher. And if you wish to seem so likewise to anyone, appear so to yourself and it will suffice you. To be a real rebel is to have the ability to rebel against one's own self.